For the motion, raise your green card. <coughs> you're not voting, you're abstaining? No, I'm against. So you read your... Oh, yeah. Who is against? Have you all voted? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Right, so I call the first speaker for the proposition. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me here tonight, and I am delighted to be able to take the opportunity to explain to you why my government is in favor of making parental leave compulsory for fathers. Now, I would like to begin the debate tonight, first of all, by laying out clearly what is the policy of this government and why we believe, as a matter of conscience, it is ultimately necessary to introduce this as a practical measure. Now, looking at the words on the screen behind me, looking at the motion before us tonight, we hear that this House, my government, believes that we are going to make this compulsory. And I make no apology for that, but we, in, we do indeed insist that this is a measure which needs to be made compulsory, i.e. If a father, if a man fathers a child, he will be forced at some point to take uh, a measure of leave, some leave from his work, some in the same way as is currently done for mothers around the time of the birth. What we envisage, in fact, is that in the whole period of leave following the birth of a child, there will be a reserved period of maternity, a reserved period of paternity, and then a joint period of parental, which will be up to the, the couples to decide themselves. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have no doubt that the opposition will seek to show me as a man who is very illiberal, to show that this is a, a, a terrible fascistic thing for a government to do, to interfere in the lives of private citizens in such a way as to force a man to take paternity leave. I don't want to go too much into the details tonight or at this point. However, one of my colleagues will come back to you with some clear evidence to say why this is necessary. But as a general comment, I would ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to consider what is the alternative if we don't take this bold and radical step, if we don't take this interference. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to consider the recent example uh, that was put forward by Facebook, and I think also by Google, where they offered to freeze the eggs of their female employees uh, in order to allow them to continue with their careers at, uh, through the 20s, through the 30s, the childbearing ages. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, on the surface, that seems like a very friendly measure, does it not? That here is a company which is really willing to put its money where its mouth is and to help its employees not to, get a, uh, not to suffer any disadvantage if they choose to raise a family. But consider it in more detail. The message that they are clearly giving is that work and family are not compatible. If a woman wants to have a family, she better do it on her own time. Her best years are for the company that she works for. So that is why I say that we need to intervene and we need to really suggest that fathers, that we need to really mandate, in fact, that fathers take a, a similar period currently enjoyed by mothers around the, the time of the birth. The second more humanistic reason that we propose this, uh, this measure is simply to recognize that the face of families has changed quite substantially over the last 50 years. At the time that this measure was implemented, at the time that maternity leave became something that was enshrined in law with clear benefits, with, uh, with a clear regulatory structure, it was quite clear that the expectations of family raising fell to the mother, expectations of earning fell to the man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is hardly an accurate reflection of today's society. What we clearly see is that Participation of women in the workplace, while not at the same level as men, particularly in full-time work across Europe, is nonetheless exploding. Compared to how it was 50 years ago, my, the baseline is hardly even relevant anymore. So we enact this measure as a humanitarian step to end the disadvantage that women are currently seeing to their careers. They are entering the workforce, they are 
then hitting a brick wall at a certain point when they want to raise children, they simply don't get back in. This is a measure to equalize that discrimination. Ladies and gentlemen, two generations ago, three generations ago, your mothers and your grandmothers fought for the right of the work of a woman to be recognized as being just as good as a man. Ladies and gentlemen, with this measure that we are proposing here tonight, the full equalization of the participation of child rearing of men and women, ladies and gentlemen, we are sending the clear message. It is time to recognize that a man can do just as good a job as a woman. Thank you. And now, thank you for the first uh, speaker. Now I'm calling the first speaker of the opposition team. And please, microphone. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this debate fundamentally centers on one question. What is the right balance in engaging society to foster fathers' involvement in supporting their children? We support parents supporting um, the, the um, education of their child. What we do not agree with is the compulsory nature of the government's proposal. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the crux of this debate. I will speak about equality because this is obviously one of the core issues of this debate. The government claims that by imposing two fathers to take parental leave, they will increase the equality, gender equality in society. And we disagree with this proposal. We don't think that the step going from making um, parental leave available to making it mandatory is the right step to supporting gender equality. Equality is something that comes through debate, through debate within families, between the fathers and the mothers who discuss what they want to do with their child, how they want to raise their children, and uh, uh, in society, where uh, different points of view in society um, discuss the issue of, of gender equality. I'm I'm going to disagree with your point that equality comes through debate and engagement in society. Equality has fundamentally come through legislation all the way through history, from racism, from gender equality at the beginning. Legislation fundamentally helps equality. We don't disagree that legislation helps equality, and this is why we support that uh, fathers have access to paternal leave if they want to do that. But of course, your proposal goes beyond that. It requires father to take paternal leave, and this is where we disagree. Um, I want to make another point about equality. Equality is not a single point. There is not, you cannot take gender equality and look at it alone as a standalone point. There are other forms of equality that are important, and I want to speak about another one now, which is very uh, crucial too, which is equality between the younger generations and the older generations. The previous speaker said, I believe very correctly, that essentially women in childbearing age are hitting a brick wall in the job market because of the risk of uh, uh, childbearing uh, that they pay with lower salaries and a lower prospect in the job market. What the opposition is proposing essentially is to broaden this brick wall and force young, all young men, all young people to suffer the same, uh, the same. And this means that young families, men and women together, will suffer from lower revenues than they would otherwise. And of course, there is a question of balance here. We support the notion that there should be more access to um, um, uh, paternal leave for fathers, because this is the right thing to do. But going all the way and forcing it simply is not the right, the proper balance uh, in, in, in balancing the different uh, uh, challenges that this raises. Um, <coughs> Finally, um, yes, I, I, let, let me, let me, cl let me uh, clarify this point a little bit further because I believe it's a, it's a truly crucial point here. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot overlook the reality of the job market today. Employers, when they see a young, per a young woman coming for a job in a job interview, see the potential of that woman leaving um, for, maternal, for maternal leave. What the opposition, what the government is, is, is proposing is to impose the same burden to every young person in this country. Uh, and this is simply not the right approach. By 
making this a possibility for debate within the couple, we guarantee that uh, the, the debate can happen within society, within companies, when it is right to engage with, uh, with uh, the family and when it is right to focus on, on, on the money. So, uh, in conclusion, I believe the debate on equality here is important, of course, but uh, it is wrong to assume that by making um, the parental leave for fathers mandatory, you are um, improving the situation. Making it available is the right step at this point in the current economy and to cater to the real need of society today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now I'm calling the second speaker of the proposition team. Hello. So we heard two fundamental misunderstandings and misconstruences of this debate from the opening opposition. Firstly, he stood up and said this was a male issue, a men's rights issue. It's not. It's a women's rights issue. It's a social equality issue. And secondly, he said that debate will happen. Society will get there. We sit here and we gently cruise along and we coast towards equality. Well, I think we've proven well, my, my partner has given a, a basic understanding of why this measure particularly and the compulsory nature of this measure will, give, will push towards equality. I'm going to build on that. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why legislation is invariably one of the best ways to equalize social settings which are in this case, but in other cases in different situations, in this case skewed against women. So firstly, why does the compulsory nature of this particularly help women and why, why is it not going to happen without, without this compulsory government mandated nature? Well, firstly, my partner explained to you why the free market isn't providing adequate solutions. The free market solution so far has been to offer women the possibility to freeze their eggs or to postpone or to basically delay having a family at all as if that's not something that is in any way compatible with having a successful career. We reject that. We reject the idea that society should be framed in such a way that careers and families can't not mix, even if it's the case at the moment. So we've said, how can we make the mix? How can we make career and family mix? Well, it's clear that we have to give, equalize the, the playing field, as it were, for women and men. Women, for all sorts of reasons, both biological and in general, it's good socially to raise your child for the first formative months of their life, take time off from work, and that's okay. But men don't. Men haven't. Men are offered it in various different forms all across Europe currently, but they don't take it. And the reason for that is we have all sorts of societal constructs, gender constructs, we have necessities, we have all of these reasons that men don't take it, and they won't take it unless we force them. What happens when we force them? Well, all of a sudden the playing field is equalized. Women are suddenly treated equally than men when it comes to hiring, because it doesn't matter if you're hiring a woman or a man. At some point, you know, if you're hiring someone in their early 30s, they may be married a couple of years, odds are they're going to maybe have a kid. It used to be, it currently still is the case, that that situation situation tilts the playing field against a woman. We need to make it that that tilts the playing field against women and men equally. And I know that there are disadvantages to this. We accept, uh, I'll take you in a minute, we accept that to some extent this is going to put a hindrance on maybe the career progression of men, except for it won't, because everyone will be working along the same playing field. Please. I'm astonished that the speaker does not recognize the fundamental changes that have already happened in society through debate, through uh, evolution. Compare a man of 60 today with a man of 30 today, the vision towards their involvement with children is fundamentally different. And this is because of uh, societal mm -hmm. debate. Mm -hmm. And if you compare the paycheck of a woman today with the paycheck of a man today, you'll see they're also fundamentally different. So something is clearly going wrong. Anyways. Uh, so really, what, so when we look at the, the, the families and the family issues, there are also loads of reasons why it's good for people to take time off work. It's not only the situation that their career is, is a factor, also the reality is men who take time off to be involved with their children in those formative early months and become more involved in general. They also do things like re get, become more engaged in housework. They also reduce that second shift, that shift that, uh, that a lot of women do when they're in families where they come home from their full-time job, because we, we accept that lots of women do work full-time. They come home from their full-time job and they immediately cook the dinner and they do the, they do the household finances or they do the accounting. Or the, you know, there's so many different things that women have to do on top of the duties that men somehow shirk. For some reason, we're still living in this situation. We're in this flux situation where women are now encouraged more to get involved in the workforce, but they're also encouraged to fulfill their traditional gender roles. And that is not a situation that is tolerable or tenable in the long term.
So what, is, what have we brought you in the opening part of this debate? Firstly, we've told you why, at the moment, a non-compulsory situation has fundamentally failed to fix the problem. We've told you why a compulsory situation is particularly suited to fixing this problem. And we've told you why, even if it were the case that the, there are some impacts on the careers, the overall societal benefit where men become more engaged in the families, become more engaged in their children's life, all of these things that are strong, sincere, you know, uh, uh, correlation, uh, causative, causative, causing outcomes of, of people taking paternity leave, which they don't do in this current situation, all of these good outcomes are brought by our side of the house. They're brought by, consult, uh, by compulsory paternity leave, we beg to propose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'm calling the second speaker of the opposition team. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I could just uh, I, I was wondering uh, in amazement how the opposition is uh, the, the, sorry the government is trying to paint this vision of uh, paternal leave which is what would you expect two months three months like really an episode in a, in a man's life to completely reshape the society as we know it those changes that we expect from this short period we already are observing them now and we don't really believe that uh, enforcing such a such a such a huge uh, change uh, would really uh, create the, the revolution. I think the revolution is already underway, and you are trying to uh, just throw the baby out together with the with the bathwater. Uh, what what this proposition is actually targeting? Who this proposition is targeting is not m men. Uh, uh, as a, as a whole, uh, um, I mean the entire male population, because a lot of men in our day in our day and age are already happy to uh, engage to get involved in the family uh, uh, rearing in, in in taking care of their children, and even my brother is about to become a, a full time uh, father. Uh, next week, I'm not. Tr I'm not uh, bullshitting you. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not lying. This is truth. His uh, girlfriend is taking a full-time job, and he's gonna stay at home, and he'll be very happy about it. And this is not an exception to the rule. We are very much embracing uh, this uh, this behavior, but we believe it has to come from within. We believe that uh, more and more there is more and more debate. More and more uh, ma men are getting convinced by the, exa by the example of, uh, of people around them that there's nothing shocking about it, that they can actually allow themselves to become father and be more involved and sacrifice a bit of their career. And this is already happening. But what this proposal is, w which uh, this proposal is actually targeting people who would not do that out of their own uh, initiative, out of their own volition. So let's, Im let's imagine who are those people. There are people for who for, they are men who for many reasons are either unca incapable, incapable of doing that, or unwilling, or they put their career first. Do you think that making them do that for several months will really change them throughout? Do you think it's good for the family? Do you, th do you think it's good for the child to have an unwilling father who's not really uh, trying, who doesn't even know how to change the diapers? Mm, you know, guys who really don't have it in their uh, in their structure, in their mental structure. To, 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 to engage in those things that they don't really feel are fulfilling them, you know? They really prefer to focus on something else. And uh, it, of course, they are, they are, they are the probably the minority. I, I wish to believe that's the case. But still, if we enforce, enforce this motion, this uh, requirement on all men who are completely unwilling... I'm not sure it's working anymore. Yes. It is? Okay. If we enforce it, it will be detrimental uh, to to the child it will not help it will not bring any any benefit to them and also the woman if she has a job she will have to be, this will be the the situation that you already described the woman comes back home and she has to pick up uh, after the, fa the, the the guy and fix everything that he was unable to do yes uh, people aren't happy doing things until we force them to do it they adapt pretty quickly racists didn't want to share schools with black people and then we and it changed pretty quickly. Yes, you, you keep uh, giving the racism example. I think they are not very compatible uh, issues here. So I, I'm not going to comment on that I, because we don't really believe that coercion is the only way to, to shape the, uh, the society, especially when it comes to things that should be left to the choice of uh, individuals. You know, w when we form a family, when we form a, a couple, 
we don't do it. Uh, w th this is not to detriment of anybody else. This is something we we do without harming other people. And racism is something that uh, that uh, that harms other people. So I think this is completely irrelevant. Uh, so the second the second thing that makes me think uh, that that I that I that we think about when we when we talk about ex uh, the coercion that we talk about making this uh, proposal compulsory and making paternal leave compulsory is uh, if those men are so uh, so unwilling to do it on, out of their own will what will make them do it there will have to be a, a, an official state sponsored mechanism to control it you know think of all the army of officials of clerks enforcing this you know inspections uh, you know Re really making sure that those men are actually staying at, whore, at, at home, <laughs> that they, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Freud and sleep, that those men are not just taking the paycheck, you know, the, the money and going, you know, gambling and, and paying for a babysitter, because that's a very, very possible uh, way to think of it, you know. How, how can you really enforce, if you're really such a friend of enforcement, go and figure. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, I think I made it clear that enforcement is not what we would support. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. And now I open the floor to any question you might have. So please wait that the microphone comes to you. Oh, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, I would have one question for the uh, for the proposition. Uh, what about the families where actually women choose to uh, would prefer to stay at home? and would prefer that the man goes uh, to work to uh, be a breadwinner. Uh, what about that? Okay, um, I have a, actually a question for the, uh, for the opposition. Um, if you do not make parental leave compulsory, how will you avoid that men who choose to voluntarily take parental leave will not be discriminated against on the labor market. Because right now we see indeed that women who want to combine a family with a career often are discriminated against when applying for a job, earn less money. If we now make parental leave a choice, those men will be under pressure to not take the right to parental leave because other, because otherwise they will be discriminated against compared to men who don't take it. Uh, yes, I also have a question for the proposition. Uh, you talk a lot about labor markets uh, and rights of women, especially in, in income related issues. Uh, what about uh, couples where they've arranged paternity or maternity leave according to who earns more or less so that they can actually manage on, on their uh, coupled income? I would, uh, I would have also one question for the uh, opposition. Uh, you talk about debate and that it's the uh, tool of how to improve things. But what if the debate actually doesn't happen? What, the, what if the debate is stifled by pressures from the grandparents and great-grandparents who uh, push their uh, uh, children to, uh, to f fit within some um, uh, ro uh, roles which they see as legitimate? I have actually another remark for the opposition, uh, for the opposition speaker number two. It is correct that there is no real control if the men taking the compulsory paternal leave are actually going to look after the child rather than using their time off to go to football, go gambling and everything. But we have to trust a bit in the decency of our society. We don't, right now, women who take a, para uh, a maternal leave, we also don't control if they don't just use their time to go shopping and, uh, and to, instead of looking after the child. So we have to trust the men a little bit, I think. Uh, yeah. Also, a follow-up question on on the issue of uh, of the of the opposition's view of of men. Uh, so you talk a lot about this horrible, bleak, uh, deep sense of, of of human indecency that men seem to possess. But you're also talking about how you know we have a great evolution and things are moving forward. So how do you really feel about uh, how men are moving forward and taking care of their children? Uh, 
I would have uh, just one final question for me for for the uh, proposition. Um, uh, what troubles me a little bit is that uh, we talk about democratic societies and uh, actually we don't see any big popular movement uh, who would actually uh, push for this. We don't see a big big marches of, of women uh, uh, with banners, uh, uh, compulsory parental leave for men now. So how would you answer to this? I have a I have a question for the proposition. So you mentioned that your proposal is to enforce equality between women and men, but as far as I understand, the proposal is just to enforce a compulsory paternity and maternity leave of a few months, and then the rest they will decide between them. So at the end, well, what's going to happen? Because it can just be a few months of compulsory paternal leave and then the rest for the women. So. Is this going to really change something? Is it really worth it? I, I'm astonished that none of these sides have even commented on the most important person in the family, that is the child. Uh, do you have any evidence or a statistic, uh, statistical argument uh, why uh, children are better off if they're raised by two uh, parents rather than one? I would I like to add a general remark about the democratic and voluntarily character of this. Uh, I believe that sometimes a government needs to show a little bit of dictatorship characteristics to push through to push through something good because if we did not make laws that would illegalize or criminalize um, racism or discrimination based upon upon religion or gen sexual orientation, no company would voluntarily impose those. So sometimes the government needs to push something through against the will of the people Sorry. for general improvement for society. I entered the debate later, so apologize if you've already mentioned this, the, both, both or either sides, but um, the debate is about fathers, but uh, what about um, same-sex couples? What about if you have two mothers, how would this address um, having both parents taking care of their child in that situation? Okay, so it's a short one. What would be the length of this uh, parental leave? I would like to also point to the opposition that in some countries, such as, for example, Scandinavian countries, um, the maternal and parental leave are much longer and better organized than it is here, and are those societies better off than us? I would say they are. So I think that parents being there for the children when in the earliest stage of their life has proven to be successful. Okay, thank you very much. So now I'm calling the third speaker of the opposition team. Thank you, Madam Speaker and distinguished guests. Uh, I will start by just making a clear distinction. Then I will answer to the questions that have been raised. I will answer them. And then afterwards, I will summarize our points again. The, main, the most important thing that you have to take away, and I know that f there are five times more people in this room who support this motion than the ones who are actually against it, who oppose it. To you, I want to send the message, this motion is not about who is for gender equality, because we all are. But this question is about, do we want to force fathers, do we want to force people to stay at home, or do we want to give them the choice, and do we, provide, do we want to provide incentives? If you're for incentives, then you can go vote for us. If you're for force, then you should vote for these people, because that's what they want to do, and that's what they said before. So now let me start by answering just some of the questions that have been raised. 
Uh, the first question, let's make the quick ones. What about same-sex couples? Uh, well, it's easy. If you're lesbian, you will not be forced by their proposal. If you're a gay couple, both of them will be forced to stay at home. <laughs> this is equality according to this team, not to my mind. Second point, what was about the, the length of parental leave? In Scandinavian countries, usually you have around 52 weeks, if I remember correctly. Sometimes you add 17 weeks uh, for women um, in addition. So this is somehow the, the, the range that you have at the moment. Why are Scandinavian countries so fantastic? And not all of them are. But I can tell you just from, at least uh, from the time when I spent in Denmark, is because they have made some societal changes which had a massive impact. And one of the key things that they had was salary reimbursement. One thing that you said before, the second speaker from your team was, they won't take it, they meaning the man, they won't take the paternity leave if we don't force them. They don't take that if we don't force them. Sorry, I would. I would take it immediately, and a lot of people do. And we have studies that show us that since the 1971, actually from 1991 it's even more, more and more parents and more and more dads are actually taking paternity leave and want to contribute to the household and help raising a child. Why is this the case in the Scandinavian countries in particular? Because you have a salary reimbursement scheme. If you want to stay at home, you get 80% reimbursed in most of these countries. In Iceland, where it is the highest rate, you have a ceiling, in, uh, which means you get 80%, but unfortunately they have lowered it now. In Iceland, the number is dropping of, of men staying at home. Why is that the case? Because they lowered the salary reimbursement. If you want to get men staying at home, I don't have to force people. You don't have to force me to stay at home. I'm happy to stay at home if, uh, if my girlfriend has a kid or if I have a family. But I'm, I'm reluctant to stay at home if I only get 20% of my salary. And usually, unfortunately, in the society today, men earn more than women even for the same work. This is a disgrace. I want to change that. But we won't get that changed by force. We only get the change by societal changes. And that means through debate, like my, as my colleague said, and through other incentives like a reimbursement of the salary. But this is sufficient. This is not force. And this is the big difference between this side and our side. Coming to the, to the other question, children raised by people, what is the best for, for, for the child? Well, from my psychology studies, the answer is easy. The best for a child is if the parent, singular and plural, cares about the child. It doesn't matter how many you have, actually. It's about the most important, well, it matters as well, but the most important thing is that you care about the child. If you force somebody to be at home who doesn't want to be there, as my partner pointed out, this is not good for the child. If this is a measure to, to do something for families, I'm sorry, but forcing people to be at home who don't want to be there, it's not gonna change it. What you have to do is, again, change the society, give them a proper reimbursement, give them a leave that they enjoy, give them some time off, and then they will, they will actually stay there and, and have fun. Okay, as this is the last minute, let me point out, uh, let me just summarize the main point. What the second speaker said, I want to repeat that. They won't take it if we don't force them. You don't have to force them. We will take it if you give us incentives. I will stay at home if you give me a proper incentive of my salary. You don't have to force me. What we also had was a brick wall. We want to build a brick wall. There is a brick wall for women. You want to build a brick wall for young men as well. We want to tear down these brick walls, and we want to tear down the big brothers in the society. We don't want to, uh, fathers to be the assistant of the mother. What we want to have is families, healthy families, with motivated fathers, with incentives, not with force. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm calling for the third speaker of the proposition team. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight and for your interest in the subject. It's really glad to see that you came. Well, um, let me first uh, try to answer some of your questions. Some of you wondered about the question of earning. Well, it doesn't really matter if you earn less or more for paternity or maternity leave, because if the father takes leave and if the father earns more, then he will get like a certain amount or even the full amount of his salary and the same for the mother. But if we encourage this, we will go toward more equality on salary as well. So at the end, what we want is that no one is wondering how to take leave or why, because the salary differences will be um, lower. Then 
the democratic society. We cannot have everything by debating or by uh, wishing really strongly that society could change. And we don't see masses on the street for paternity leave, but we don't see masses on the street for poverty, and we don't see masses on the street for anything else. So I won't count on mass just to make a uh, society change. Then, about child and child poverty, it is proved that in the countries that put a lot of efforts in social policy and in parental leave, such as the Scandinavian country, the, the rate of children poverty is really low. So it doesn't really matter because with this motion, what we want to achieve is more equality. It's just a way of changing mindset, changing the corporate mindset because it has an impact on the labor market and also changing the domestic mindset because it leads to a more equal couple and a more equal share of the task. And this is what we want to achieve with this motion. And father today already have a choice in our society to take parental leave. They can do it if they want. And some are even refund 100% of the salary for some time. Yeah, but they like maybe one third to two thirds of father do it according to countries. So even if you let them the choice, mindset won't change. And this is why we have to take the lead and we have to make them take it, otherwise they will lose a lot. You can't count on choice. And I guess you can do it because you're open-minded, but it's not the case of everyone. You're young and some just are raised in a very uh, traditional pattern of family. And it's, it's those people are as well we want to target because if you want to achieve gender equality, you have to work on an individual level and on society level as well. And paternity uh, englobes this, and this is why we have to target. So our debate was to discuss incentives to improve gender equality, and this is one of the incentives. And among uh, gender equality, there's a factor that has been proven uh, to play a big role and to explain it. It's parenting. This is why we have to act on parenting. It seems strong, but it's the only way to enforce a system that already exists, but that is not fully used. And paternity leave is a brilliant mechanism. It promotes, well, uh, equality on at home and at work. It promo promotes gender equality um, on the employer side as well, because the risk will be shared. As long as we don't share the risk, how can you change anything if the risk are not shared? Then you're afraid. It's like you say that it's, it's almost a burden, but is it a burden for a woman as well? Yes, it is. So why not sharing the burden to come to our equality? Sometimes equality is not plus plus for everyone. Sometimes equality is also to share the burden and to share the task. So as long as you're not ready to do it, we won't go far. And that's a fact. So uh, we, we will enter paternity leave in the corporate and cultural mainstream. And it's also a time to learn your role of parent. It's a crucial time. And this, we cannot forget it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. So now the debate is closed. But before I open the floor again, I would like to um, uh, thank all the debaters. And especially, we have to uh, um, thank you very much. Right, so now we are going to vote again. So please um, raise your card if you are for the motion or against the motion. <laughs> oh, God, so I can see that the team that wounds is the um, opposition. Well done. 